We begin today's recording by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we are on. I am on Burrawang land. Where are you, Breeza? I am on the land of the Jajarurung people. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who are tuning in today. And wherever you're listening to the potty today, make sure you know whose land you're on. Join us each week for some booze-free banter about life without booze. If you're entertaining cutting back your booze by a day, a week, a month, or for the rest of your life, we would love for you to tune in. Buckle up and come along for a ride that may just change your life. Just a heads up, some of the conversations we have may be triggering. Reach out to your local support centre in Australia. That's Lifeline 131144. Yeah, what you drinking there, Breeza? <laughs> Today, Meso, I am talking to Altina LeBlanc. Oh, can- you're not even going to... Ch- ch- <laughs> in a can, just going to neck it straight from the can. <laughs> what about <laughs> you, Meso? Well, that's why I was cackling because I was drinking the same. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Twinsies. LeBlanc kind of day today, folks. <laughs> it, it, it is. And they've given us a DC code. What is it, Breeza? Yes, our good friends at Altina Drinks have given us a 10% discount code for our listeners. It's BFB10. Shop up a storm at www.altinadrinks.com. We love you, Altina. We sure do. Cheers, cheers. Meso. Breeza. <laughs> Hello, mate. It's been oh, a while, hasn't it? It's been too long. It's been too long, actually. Things so <laughs> for our listeners, we sort of did a bit of a bulk upload, a bulk recording of potties um, towards the end of season one for season two. So mm. it's been quite a few weeks since Meso and I have actually had a good old chin wag. <laughs> so <laughs> here we are today. Because we've interviewed yeah. quite a few people, haven't we, over the last few weeks? So yeah, it's just you and I today, baby. <laughs> just you and I, just you and me, babe. Just the two of us. <laughs> There's a lot to catch up on. There's a lot. Oh, um, yeah. I've actually since we last spoke, mate. So as you know, but our listeners don't know, I have been away on a holiday. Yes, tell us all about it. We haven't even deep dived into that off air. Goddess me. Yeah. So um, I'll tell. I'll just do it in a nutshell because I couldn't take up the whole podcast if I gave you the whole. <laughs> Um, what's it all version, but no, I went away with my children for eight nights to up to Ely Beach and we, I had my phone on Do Not Disturb, which mm. just, ladies and gentlemen, that is an absolute <laughs> game changer. There was no distraction <laughs> from my phone, not on social media, not, you know, um, texting people, purely just connecting with the kids. Mm. We had amazing weather. We were in flow and they were absolute legends. One of the best holidays I've had with them ever. Oh my god, I love this so much. <laughs> well done, mate. Thank you. Yeah, and I had a gorgeous. couple, I had a few AF drinks, but actually, funny yeah. story. I went to take them to the pub. Um, we had a day where we we'd been out to the reef for the day, and came back. It was Saturday night. Geelong and Port were playing. I think AFL footy. Yeah, and it was. Uh, about halfway through the third quarter. So I'm like, come on, kids, let's get to the pub because we came off, um, we landed in the marina. So I'm like, let's yeah. go into town, go to the pub. Went to go into this pub, like a sports bar thing. Yeah. And an old mate came up to me and goes, sorry, we can't have minors in the pub. Oh, I was like, <laughs> what I do you mean? Your footy. <laughs> what do you mean? So, yeah, oh. couldn't have kids in the pub. What? I'm like, what? So, what? yeah, I had to settle for playground action and watching it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, how great fun. holiday! Great holiday. What Gorgeous. about you, Vaso? What about Gorgeous. you? Gorgeous. Yeah, there's been a bit going on. Just when I didn't think things could get any worse, it did. But the best thing about when things get bad, it does propel you forward. So you know, it positive stay, attitude doesn't stay that way forever. So I'm right in the thick of it. Um, I've moved out of the house. I've moved into an amazing new pad. I'm starting back. Thank you so much. And this is t- such a beautiful space. I'm so lucky. I've got big floor to ceiling windows, north facing, so I get sunset and sunrise. Beautiful. It overlooks a park, so there's no like you know in these you know in a city living normally people are looking in your window. So you know I love to dance around in the nud. <laughs> <laughs> and nutty. Am I three? <laughs> no, totally relate. Totally relate. Yeah. <laughs> so it's gorgeous and I'm, yeah, I'm still in the process of obviously setting up and mm, it's a big thing. job moving yeah. on your own. It's huge. And I had lots of people offer to help me, but I was like, no, I'm doing this on my own, you know, and it was good to 
like throw shit out. You a hoarder? Yes, cleanse. Oh, such a massive cleanse. Well, yeah, I try not to be a hoarder, but yeah, I do. I do. There is some stuff I do hoard. Yeah, I think. Well, I've been brought up in a family that keeps stuff because it might be handy. There's always handy <laughs> stuff, and stuff <laughs> does come in handy, but it totally oh, does. Yeah, but anyway, so it's been great just to get rid of sh- stuff. And mm. take it, salvos have just cashed in massively on me. <laughs> Huge amount that's of stuff. Great. I got really ruthless. So that's been gorgeous. And I'm starting back at my old job. Yes. I think when this potty drops, you will be back I in the be air, mate. So, I'm yes. back. I'm back. So, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, it's all sort of unexpectedly, all things have fallen into place. And yeah, so it's all happening. It's exciting, Mason. Thanks, mate. It's really Thank exciting you. for you. I yeah. can't wait to see, you know, where you are in 12 months' time. Yeah, yeah, same, same. It's, it's awesome. Gonna, yeah, yeah. Well, the work. You, don't, you don't go through all of that without something really beautiful at the other end, Brisa. Absolutely, so. mate. Yep. Yeah. Watch this space. Yeah. Folks, watch yeah. this space. Right. Wow, well, that was like a massive, like, <laughs> nutshell version of our life for the last few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That was like the express version, um, folks. That's a fair um, bit. That's a fair bit. As, yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot. But I think I think we need to now get into a confession, confession session. session. Confession session. It's time to play. Will you tell us what you should gone first. Oh, you go, mate. So I don't think you've been first this season. Okay. Way, mate. All right. So when we, when we were living in the UK, oh, we were um, – I don't know if you ever went. Yeah, I think you did. Did you ever go to Neil's place up in the big penthouse in Putney that overlooked Putney Bridge? You could see like the London Eye. It was like right on the corner. Beautiful nah. big penthouse. It had like a rooftop balcony. I heard had about it. Balcony, and it was a, just an amazing party pad. Mm. Um, anyway, we <laughs> many a party, many many a party, and there was an off license. So for those of you who are not from the UK, off license is like a milk bar, like a sort of like a really small Seven Eleven. It's got everything you want, but actually sells booze as well. So you can just rock in on you know on your way home from work and grab a can and off you troll off you off you go. It's just yeah, the, the booze is in the same section as yeah. your orange juice. So, um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Obviously, we're having a massive bender and we just could not be beep, like walking down the stairs to go to the off license. So I come up with one of my harebrained ideas and decide I'm going to get a bucket, like the mop bucket, and send it down on some sort of rope or something and put a note in it with some a couple of quid to say, <laughs> send us back up some, you know, s- Strongbow Vodka. and a couple of dark <laughs> Mar- 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 <laughs> you know. Five quid. Yeah. <laughs> Where is it going to get rope from? Like Neil doesn't have like 10 metres of rope hanging That's around the place. Killer. He's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, he doesn't have a sailboat. Like, <laughs> so I thought, oh, what have we got? Extension, power cord extension lead. Of course. Yeah, that'll, 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 that'll do the job. So I've tried to hook up this thing and I've sent it down. And like, mind you, it's a Monday morning. People are walking to work. <laughs> like, Oh, so you're full at the end of the oh, bender. Like yeah. you're full, right. So throw this thing over the edge and thinking we're real smart, <laughs> loose as, lost it, dropped it, bucket falls on the ground, like could have knocked somebody out, like really silly, responsible. Yep. Anyway, they got, they looked at the note and they loved it and they ended up having a bit of a lol and then, but did tell us off, we did get a smack, but that's silly. That could have really hurt someone. Was it going outside the building or inside yeah, the building? No, right outside, outside sorry, the over, the, over the balcony, yep, onto yep. the main street, onto the main road of Putney. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know all well, listeners will be asking, did you get? Did you the get the goods? And the darts. Well, they couldn't send it back up because I let, let go of the power oh, cord, the extension lead. So, yeah, ended up having to go back down there and they gave us a smack and said, no, oh, that was silly. And I'm like, sorry. Oh, oh yeah. Dead. <laughs> End of the bender. But this is a stupid thing. Yeah, that's what, you know how we've been talking lately about missing those really loose and leery mm. moments and where the night will take you and doing really fun, silly mm. stuff. Like that wasn't too bad. It could have been bad. Like if it that bucket had bad. dropped on someone's head and knocked someone out and they're waiting totally. to work. Can you imagine? No. Or if someone had, I like go straight to, if someone had given you the booze, put the booze in the bucket, then you're pulling it up and then you dropped it. Smash. Oh, there you go. Bang. Yeah. 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 So yeah, potential, potentially a massive injury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone will just have to start wearing stack hats to work. <laughs> On a Monday morning. <laughs> yeah. It's prime, prime time yeah, for, bender, yeah. for benders to go really bent out of shape. <laughs> yeah. What have you got, oh, Brisa? Yeah. Well, I'm, again, surprised that I hadn't bought this one out um, earlier, but it's a really skanky story. It's real, oh. sk- real skank-like behaviour. 
Um, and it's actually at other, it's a bender too, Meso. Um, mm. I can't remember where we had been. This was probably, would have been back in my 20s. So we had been, I feel like we'd been to, a, like we'd been out. Anyway, we all ended up um, back at our mate's house. And so it was a Sunday, probably afternoon by then, in the shed, shed party going on. I've actually got, fo- you know what, I've actually got photos from this today. Yeah. And someone put them on Facebook and oh. I had like high-vis goggles on, <laughs> um, just like being a menace and I had to tell her to remove them. I said, can you please oh. get those photos down? And she did because I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, that was like, you know, sort of our little in the sanctum behaviour. Yeah. Right. Anyway, anyway, so um, at some point, of the day, a group of girls rocked up to this place. This place was in um, uh, a suburb at a Bendigo. Yeah. So we weren't in the main drag. We were like in a burb. So this group of girls ha- had rocked up and they had been at the party the night before. Mm. And one of the girls, um, she is the ex-partner of one of the boys that was there, right? Mm. And that, that was okay. Like that was that was fine. But her and her little um, posse girls rocked up. And oh. for some reason, <laughs> Breeza just took it upon herself <laughs> oh, no. to go up to them. They were sort of at the gate to go up to the gate and give them the biggest spray of their lives. <laughs> like, I don't know, this inner like beast came out of me and I just gave, <laughs> gave him a spray and stormed off. Oh, spray and storm. <laughs> spray and storm. <laughs> And I got back to like the shed because everyone saw it. They were sitting in the shed and everyone saw the action. And oh, everyone God. was like, oh, good on you, Breeza. Like just loving me, <laughs> just loving me sick for it. And these birds, like I feel su- like such a rat because oh. that's the sort of stuff you see with rats in like, yeah. you know, in the mall and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> me at like, I don't know, 3 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> or a spray and storm. Yeah. Um, and then the birds end up, they end up leaving. Um, the party that they didn't actually get into. But, yeah, and I remember the next day just going, oh, that was disgusting. <laughs> like, <laughs> What did you say to them? Oh, look, I'm not going to say it because oh. um, it doesn't. I was I was standing up for someone. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, so, okay. I was standing up for someone because there must have been, like, patchy details, but there must have been something that had happened. So okay. I went up and just gave these girls a mouthful um, <laughs> on behalf of this other person. <laughs> And I would not be doing that sober, Meso. I would no. not be doing that. I actually remember I even shocked myself going, oh, my God, who are you? <laughs> like full rat, full rat behavior. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, oh. something I'm not proud of at all. Yeah. And if I could take, if I could relive that moment, I would definitely not do what I did because it wasn't, I just had that dread. As soon as I did, I'm like, oh, my God, sit the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> sit down <and> shut up. <laughs> So I actually am going to make a public apology to those. Uh, oh. I think it was about four or five birds there. So oh. sorry, girls. Um, you didn't deserve that. <laughs> and it was the booze that made me do it. <laughs> yeah, it's always the booze. But I will say, though, what a loyal friend you are to get in there and obviously support your friend for whatever happened to just go and give yeah. someone a bit of a spray. So your heart was could've, in the right place. Could have just done Probably it. Probably could have executed it. Yeah. <laughs> could have be, been delivered a bit nicely, maybe in a text. <laughs> What do we say, Meso? It, it wouldn't, wouldn't have happened, happened if, we if we weren't had. <laughs> we really nailed that one. I think we've got to speed it up. Yeah, okay. I feel, like we're, up? I feel like we're just like a bit slow. We need to like give a bit more punch <laughs> Yeah, okay, busy enough. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened if we weren't having. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are we um, bantering on about today, Meso? Cravings, cravings. I'm actually going to call this. Um, episode, yeah, the C word. Oh, because <laughs> we're talking about the C word. We're not talking about Christmas, folks. No, no, no. We're talking about cravings today. Cravings. Golly gosh, tell me about it. Oh, Bruce. well, I've actually got a very relevant story and yep. recent story. Yep. Um, so the time of this potty is bloody bang on. It's yes. so bang on. So yep. when I got back from Ellie Beach, I literally did it. What do you call it in aviation a hot turn? Is it a hot turn? <laughs> oh, when you go round. Yeah. Like is that you, what you mean in the air? Yeah. Is it like a hot yeah. turn? Oh, no, a go round. Like if you have to go round. Like if, if you've gone into land but then they've gone up again. And no, 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 no. Around. So I've landed on the aeroplane, um, cleaned the plane out and then oh. going back. Is that oh, a yeah, hot yeah, turn? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a hot turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah hot yeah, turn. Yeah. So I literally, I literally, and you know what? Like being in transit for a day. So we left early Beach on the Friday. I woke up at 6 o'clock Friday morning, packed, packed my bags, packed the kids' bags, cleaned the cabin out. Went into town, got some ice cream, came back. Kids had a swim, 
got on the bus, got to the airport, oh waited, got on the plane, got back to Melbourne, got a minibus to our car, got oh. in the car, <laughs> went back to Bendigo. Got back to Bendigo at 9 o'clock at night. So that's oh. 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. I was like, you know, you got stuff going on. Fair trick. So, so got home, washing, hot turn the next day, got in the car and went up to Echuca, which is about an hour from Bendigo because they had the Winter Blues Festival on. So massive party, uh, blues and roots, lot, lot, just a really good vibe. The street is absolutely humming. Yeah. So I um, went up with my friend and we got there. So there's a group of us going. So they were, the group were already up there. And so I pulled up to where we were staying and I'm like, oh, I could really get hammered tonight. <laughs> yeah. And so I sort of sat in it going, and I had my AFBs and that was great, um, but I sort of sat there going, why Why am I wanting to do this? Which is really interesting to sort of stop myself and go, okay, let's mm. unpack this. Why do you want to do it? Mm. Main reason was everyone else was doing it. Yeah, Like right. there was literally thousands of people drinking in the street, fires in the street, everyone's happy, all ages. It was actually a fairly old crowd. but um, So I was like, everyone else is going to be hammered. And I had, I had I've been to concerts sober, but I hadn't been to a festival. I hadn't yeah, been to right. like a whole festival sober. Mm-hmm. And festivals to me are like, you know, you get, you get. <laughs> sideways. <busy>. Yeah, sideways. <laughs> so, yeah, it was really interesting um, mm. to sort of go through that thought process. Why do I want to get hammered? Yeah. What's, yeah. And, you know, after again, after spending eight days on my own with the children, mm. bit of adult company, ripped the lid off it. Yeah. Would be my normal behaviour. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's a bit habitual, isn't it? Like habitual. That's what you normally do. Hit the nail on the head, Mesa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you? So that was tough. Yeah. Did you have to talk yourself through that? What Did you pay it forward? What was your thought process? Um, well, I had my AFBs, so that was a tool that I lent on to have yep. the AFBs. Yeah. And then we actually, we had to go, we went out to a winery before we went because um, there was stuff on that winery, which was a fair way out of town. So I was like, well, I'd have to get a taxi for that. So I like I like having the car. The car is like total control and power for me. It's having a car. car's your anchor. Car's my anchor. And yeah, I did I did play it for the tape for Meso because I thought mm. um, if I have a if I get on it and have a massive and I will have a massive night. Let's be honest. Mm. Then the next day Sunday I'm going to be hung. And Monday, I was back at work after having holidays, which, you know, when you get back to work after holidays, it's oh. hectic, hectic, hectic. So I'm like, oh. I don't want to be tired and disgusting and yucky on Monday morning. Mm. That was probably the biggest one for me. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's a fair, and, that, and like weighing that up and just going, yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> I don't no. want that, that, that little high is just not worth that deba- debauchery after, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. And yeah. I wasn't with the group of people I was with. They're like they're drinkers, but it wasn't like everyone was going to be sideways. Yeah, yeah, right. There's a couple yeah. of girls that aren't huge drinkers anyway. So yeah, so yeah, it was tough, but I got through it, and I'm yeah. glad I didn't drink. Well was, done. Um, yeah, that night I had to actually drive um, someone home, so yeah. I'm glad that I was there to be able to take them home. Bloody well done, Breezer. It's a hard effort. It's an amazing effort. And one thing I must say is that you. As such as you are so social, like you're up and about and going to all the things, but the things that you're going to, wow, they're challenging. They're <laughs> yeah. wineries. <laughs> they're not oh, just yeah, picnics or yeah. going for a walk or hiking. <laughs> you're actually going to places where it's in your face. And yes. so, yeah, you're not, it's, it, it's not easy on yourself at and all. That comes down to FOMO because I just want to be in the action. I just, <laughs> yeah. I just don't want to miss out. So, you know, I just want to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah, well I hadn't thought done. of that actually, Mace. So that's just one example. Yeah, and I'm sure there'll be others as we go along. But what about you, May? So tell me about your cravings. Yes. Uh, or yeah, have you had any? And oh. what they look like? Well, funnily enough, when we had this topic brought up, I was like, mm, I don't have any cravings. Then yeah, I can't believe it, you you said that. No, no, nah, like because I well, I did because I was like, oh, what am I going to talk about in this episode? Like, I have yeah. nothing. Then, yeah. then that happened. <laughs> Moving happened. Hmm. Massive, yeah. Massive. And I have always moved and had drinks. Yes. Always moved drunk. <laughs> always, <laughs> seriously. You moving is the, on the most bloody boring thing, packing boxes. <laughs> to, uh, like, but, and, I, and so I always made a bit of a party. Like, I'd, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, get, get you a couple of bottles of rose and then just hook into it. Music on, 
pack a few boxes, make it real fun because yep. it's the most draining, boring beige thing that you can possibly do. <laughs> and also there's yes. a lot of emotion yes. with that as well. It's the end of a chapter and a start of a new one and it's it's a lot going on. So there was a st- I f- I, what was meant to take me two days took me four days. Okay. Because I just, I really struggled to be really honest with you. I was, yeah, it was a real battle to move. I had to really <sighs> take a lot of time out. Um, and there was, I remember there was a, a moment there that I was walking down the steps and I just went, okay, the normal thing would be just to go and buy some wine now. Yep. I flipped back to that must be muscle memory or what I'm used to doing. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it was just a normal, natural thing, habitual. And that mo- that thought came into my head, but it flipped straight back out again, paying it forward. And actually the probably the biggest craving that I've had now. So the moving thing, yes, definitely. And also when you move into a place, where's your celebration? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so fortunately I did have um, the bottle of AF um, bubbles naughty. that, yeah, that naughty that um, Naughty gave us. Mm-hmm. For, um, and I, I, Ended up buying a little, making a little cheese platter, like a little gorgeous little platter. And Love I sat that. here in all my mess. Like it was just an absolute <laughs> rock show. Everything was just dumped here. But I found a little spot because I don't have any furniture either. I've got to completely furnish the place and everything. Um, but I sat there and I would just uh, crack my little AF bubbles and it was so good. And it was, it was, I love that so much. And I loved, I really loved that I wasn't getting drunk. That's I, unreal, mate. I, I love that I wasn't getting drunk. I knew I would be still fresh tomorrow. Yeah. I was smug about it. And, you know, I don't know whether I spoke to you about it. It might have been one of our friends. I said, do you find when you drink bubbles, like I, I turn into a bit of a mute after about, you know, 20 <laughs> minutes, half, half an hour, like I, I, or I kind of start talking and I'm like, shut up, like stop talking. Like, is, this like, just, is it like alcohol bubbles? Yeah, alcohol bubbles. Okay, like yeah, when, right, I, right. when I used to be drinking, when you drink a lot mm. and I never quite liked some of those phases of drinking when you just are a bit like, I don't know. I can't even really explain it properly. But anyway, long story short is that that, that was really beautiful having that ritual. Yeah, and I love have that. since been giving the AF drinks a really good touch up as well while I've been sort of, it has been, I have craved something, something yeah. to give me a yeah. little pep up, something yeah. in my day, something to just spice it up. And I've, yeah, I've lent on the gins, I've lent on the whatever I've got. There's so many alcohol free drinks here, you know. Mm. Um, so that's been so, so good. You go. No, you're going to continue. God. The second craving and was when I found out some pretty rough news just recently that just took things to a whole new level, which has turned my, it's extraordinary actually, the anxiety that I've got from this and I've absolutely thrown everything at it to cope with what's going on. But one of our, our friends said to me, she goes, I definitely thought you'd be rolling straight into the bottle shop and she oh. thought I definitely thought you'd, I'd be calling oh. triple O. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Massive, massive. So, I, I had that craving. Yeah. I, it's not more of a craving. It's just I think it's that habitual thing because it's not something that I'm sitting there white knuckling and going, Same. oh, my God, I need this. Like, yeah. Because we pay it forward. Because yes. if I had have drank during that time that I've, mm. I would be an absolute effing mess, honestly. Yeah. I would not be having any control over my emotions at all and they are, at high level at the moment, it's yep. really well intense. done. Yeah, so well done I'm recognizing that. Thanks, Prisa. Because well. yeah, it's just so. Yeah, so I feel really smug. So well done, Meso. Thanks. Well done. Thanks. Um, I've got an an analogy, do that, that I got? think you will relate to this, and yeah. perhaps our listeners will. So yeah. <laughs> at the moment, I feel like I'm a kid in the playground, and you know it's fun like this. I'm, I'm on the slide, I'm mm. on the swings, I'm mm. on like the spinny thing. That's, that's all. It's all nice and pretty fun. Yeah. But just near the playground <laughs> is this yeah. kick-ass roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to go on that. Yeah, yeah. And I know it's dangerous. I know it's going to go up and down. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be some pretty crazy times. <gasps> but I can see that. I'm like, I want that roller. I want to go on that roller coaster. Yeah. It's you like, yeah. And that's yeah. how I feel about my sobriety at the moment. Everything's like, you know, it's like pretty stable, pretty stable, yeah. and you don't you okay. don't get those really high high, those really low lows. I feel that you just mm. sort of, you know, almost like flatline out. You get a few, obviously, you do get movement in there, <laughs> yeah. but you yeah. don't get like, yeah, because I just love getting drunk. Yeah, yeah. So that's 
and that and that's a craving I get, mate. So is just mm. the getting loose. Yeah, like I'm not. Like yeah. I do actually. Um, I miss I miss red wine. All yeah, the other okay. all the other drinks I'm okay with. Like, you know, a nice French champagne I would like tuck <laughs> into as well. Yeah. All the other, but all the other AF drinks have re- been an amazing replacement for those oh. um, alcoholic versions. Yeah, but I do crave um, just. The looseness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I, yep. Yep. <laughs> so, but again, as soon as I sort of start fantasizing and romanticizing mm. alcohol, mm. I play the tape forward. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it saves, it catches me every time. Doesn't it? It no, really catches me. I'm with you 100% freezer. Like it's just not worth it. That yeah. little high or that little drink, because it's never just one drink. It's you'd ended up, you just end up blowing it out. Yes. And just the, the, the aftermath the next day just is not worth that. Correct. And I think that's been like, as we've sort of um, matured in our mm. sobriety journey, <laughs> <laughs> like when you have those cravings and look, I think that everyone at some point will have, if they haven't already, mm. ha- have a craving or pop up. It'll pop up at, when you least expect it. Yeah. So I think having the um, knowledge to go, okay, why am I having this craving? Yeah. What's going on internally? What's going on mm. that's making me want to have this drink or to yeah. get hammered? It's not about having a drink. It's about getting hammered for me. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we're never not having just one drink. Yeah. It's like, why do I want to get wasted white girl wasted yeah so what's that what's your why like yeah, think about that think about that and that's been very helpful for me again like that festival one I'm like I want to get hammered because that's what I would normally do mm. and I've just had eight days with the kids on my own mm. but I'm like why would I want to undo all that work I've just done yeah exactly exactly and like what when you have like say if you say if I had have had those drinks just in this last week or so yeah that's not going to stop there, Breeza. Correct. Is yeah. It? Yeah. I, I don't I'd be, think I feel it like would. I'd blow up the podcast. <laughs> 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 booze free and booze hound bants. <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared of that. I'd Is that, that what's maybe. holding you back? Maybe? No, not really. But I feel like, like you, I, I feel like if I had a drink now, it would just undo all the hard work that I've done. Like, so what's, do the you, I, what's the point? I actually think, Meso, and this is only with, and I could be completely wrong, but I think I'm getting to a point yep. where I could, and again, it goes back to the red wine because I can't find a good replica of a, of a nice, <laughs> bold Heathcote Shiraz. But yes. I feel like I could have a glass of wine. Yeah, okay. Well, funnily enough, so now that I'm single <laughs> yes. and starting to dip my toe back into the dating game, mm-hmm. That's a whole episode. There we go. That's a whole episode. So what do I do? I don't know, mate. I don't have any experience in sober dating. So, Yeah, because we were talking to um, a friend. They were talking about it too and she was doing Dry July at the time and she was talking about, she's like, oh, you can't not have a drink when you go on your first couple of dates. Why not? And and that's what I (laughs) sort, sort of thought too. And then I'm like, can you or can't you? I we need know. to get we need to get Sammy back on the potty. But as he, even as I'm saying this and unpacking it, I'm like, it's a hard no. It's a hard no yeah. because because I am so petrified of bringing alcohol back into my life yep. and back into a relationship. Yeah, terrified. Well, there's your answer, mate. Yeah, yeah. There is it's your answer. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Yeah, alcohol is such a stain. That, yeah, and dating pain. like ha- like in our forties. Is going to look different to the last time you were dating in your thirties as well. Mm. I don't know. Not that we're saying we're old and grandmas, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I um, I have no advice to give you, Meso. There, but don't drink. Yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I well, I think so. I mean, even like sex is better sober anyway. I'm not going there with this um, whole podcast oh. because that, that's what. <laughs> I just, I when it comes to, that, I'm like a prude talking about that sort of stuff so, on like to a light, like to a wide audience. I'll talk about it to my mates, but sorry, people, you're not going to get any she's insight. Shutting that down. I'm I know. That down. Well, it was actually for me, so. well, well, it's funny, isn't it? We were never going to talk about this sort of stuff while we had partners, and now that I don't, I'm kind of free reign. So you can go for it, mate. <laughs> We did, yes, we did set some boundaries in place. Which was and so nice and respectful. I for think us. so, but your lid's off now, mate. Look out. 
got me whole new sexy meso section. <laughs> Oh, um, the shit. other the other question that I've written down as as a bit of a, um, a tool for people to help them with their uh, if a craving does pop up yeah. is think about what are you going to sacrifice mm. for what that say five hours of you know fun yeah or is it going to be fun I don't know yeah, uh, yeah. but for that for that drinking for that for that drinking stint what are you going to be sacrificing the next day. Yeah, what is it? Are you going to be letting a friend down because you're not going to go for a walk with her? Is it that you're going to sleep in and not play with your children? Mm. Is it that you're going to be crap for work on the Monday because you're still tired? Mm. So think about all those things. And Mm. when you start thinking about them, you're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to have a drink because I don't want to feel crap. You don't want to feel crap and you want to wake up. Don't want to feel crap. Life's too short to feel crap. Yep. Yes. Yep. And those cravings are just fleeting. They are, Meso, yeah. You've just got to either yep. distract it, do something else, yes. get your AF drinks, phone a friend, phone anyone who will listen. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who's listening to me. <laughs> yeah, get a get a friend on yep. speed dial is a really that good thing, idea. That thing that I did when I first um, started on the sobriety was ring um, ring the ex to, as I was, to talk me through the supermarket. Because I didn't want to go through the bottle shop. So Who'd that's a ring? really good thing. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Ring someone if you're Yeah, yeah ring yeah, someone if nothing. you're starting to go through the bottle shop to to talk you through the supermarket. Like, yeah, re- yeah, so. But those, yeah. yeah, they do, they don't last. Like, and you know what, I've actually been fighting myself and I'm not proud of this. And I don't do it that often, but I'll have a dart. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty dart oh, I'm a dirty dart ass. So I need to, like, it might be once a month I'll have a dart. I need menthol? to, um, menthol? just whatever's going around, but preferred, <laughs> preferred one's definitely menthol. Yes. <laughs> you just bot and scat, you just scabbing, scum and durries. Scum and durries, which are yeah. like, they're probably like five bucks a durry now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to be a dollar back in the day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I know I need to work on that. I do. And sugar is another thing for me that I've been, terrible at and I know that I've been just burying my head in the cupboard and just like <laughs> feed bag on and just finding all the lollies. <laughs> so that's another thing. I actually tried um here's a, a reco. It's yeah. called that sugar film. Oh yep. It's um, a, have you heard of it? It's an Aussie yep. guy. Yep. Aussie yeah. What's his name? Um oh, it's I have watched it. Yep. He's he's so smart and he's Isn't done he? another yeah, he's unreal. 2014 he's unreal. this one was made in, but it's obviously still relevant today. Yeah. I watched that since we last spoke, Meso, and I'm like, oh sugar. Sugar, let's do a podcast about sugar. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I need to get off it. I need to get off it. So yeah, I am. But you know what? I'm like, I'm still, I'm only what, 18 months. Not even eighteen months without booze. I'm still learning. I'm yeah. still learning. Yeah. So yeah. if I'm st- if I am turning to donuts and lollies and chocolate to help me with the craving, that's okay. I'm aware of it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't come at me, people. Yeah. You've <laughs> got to just do whatever you can to get through. And gotta if do that's it. you know, and that's okay. Damon Gamru. Yes, that's the one. That's Ga- the one. Gamru, I'm not sure, but yeah, he um. It's on Netflix that doco at the moment. Yeah. The sugar, that a, sugar film. He's a cracking dude. Um, mm. It's married to another famous chick. Actually. Yes, who is she? Because um, when I was watching, I'm like, I, she's an actress. She yeah. is an actress. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Get busy real... on wiki. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what else did I have? So I had play the tape forward, and yeah, how are you going to feel tomorrow? Yes. And it's not only like the the sickness, but are you going to? What do we say? Are you going to feel proud? The yes. Next day? Do stuff that makes you proud. Yeah. And I don't trust myself right now that if I'm drinking. I could, that I would get absolutely shit faced and who knows what would happen. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Can you really just have one glass of wine and then your brain well, just says, hmm. I just contradicted I myself and didn't I? I totally contradicted <laughs> myself. Um, <laughs> I think I, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing. This is the mental gymnastics that you're it already is. doing, going back to that, that Michael is. Jordan um uh, quote, yes. once you've made the decision, you never have to think about it again. So once I, you've made the decision I, not to drink, you're free. Yeah. But because you're like, you're already doing deals and I'm you, doing deals. And you want to get shit face, but you just want one. Yeah. Which is it. Like, <laughs> I feel like I've like, I've really this year. So 2022. Yeah. Um, since about probably March this year. So the last six months, mm. I've really been doing mental gymnastics. Oof. For six months about it all. And I'm just like, just don't drink. Yeah. Like, what are you really missing out on if you are not drinking? 
Yeah. I know, but I've had lots of people say to me, oh, are you still not drinking? I've had so many people <laughs> have say you really? to me, yeah, oh, yeah, God. are you still not drinking? Oh, how long do you reckon you'll last? It's like just, yeah, it's, it's a thing. I've got a friend who's pregnant at the moment and she was like the whole wanting to announce it to friends and family but having to explain why she's not drinking is a thing. Yes, Massive totally a thing. thing. That needs to be yeah. off the charts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why are you drinking? Mm-hmm. Are you pregnant? Or if someone is, just don't go there. Don't go Conversation there. Conversation about right. alcohol and being pregnant because we don't know people's fertility journey or what their Correct. situation is. So it's really touchy. Yeah. Just don't go there. Agree. Um, sorry, you got me real tits in a tangle about that. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I've noticed actually, May, so, um, I like I love organizing stuff. Actually, I've organized a winery tour um, in October. This is a whole group of us going. Um, I love organizing social events, right? Mm. And I found that I'm not doing that. Like the weekends, I don't have the kids, so I've got a bit of itchy nose. I'm just going to tail on my nose. <laughs> yeah, get into get into it. <laughs> I um yeah, like normally I'd be like right. Haven't got, a, haven't got the kids this weekend, I'd say to my partner, let's go out for tea with, um, you know, this group of people or let's organise this or let's see what these guys are up to because we'll go and have a few drinks. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Which right. I don't like, yeah, I don't like necessarily sitting at home on a Friday night. I like to be out and about. Up and about. <laughs> and I'm not doing that because I'm yeah. like, well, I'm not drinking. So that's been, yeah, interesting for me to sort of process. Yeah. Because um, there's, yeah, um, uh, some friends that I really want to catch up with, a guy and a girl, and they're big drinkers. And yeah. I'm like, well, I don't really, I, I don't really want to go out for dinner with them if I'm not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my head. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. It's difficult. It's a lot mm. to, it, it's, it's so funny. It's such a simple thing, right? <laughs> remove alcohol, like remove alcohol from your life, but it is an absolute jungle out there. Absolute jungle. It like, is. It's, it's it is. like if you remove carbs from your life. Or chocolate. Exactly. If yeah. you just, you know, it's just insane how hectic and trying to navigate this is not easy. Yeah. But it's I think, challenging, but I think it's just, yeah, it's processing it and, and finding to, out where you fit in the world with it all. Yeah. And to all our listeners, I think every craving you overcome, high five yourself. Yes. Because like we've said, it does last. It's a fleeting moment and you'll get through it. And then you'll wake up the next day and go, I'm so glad I didn't drink last night. Yes. Be proud. And every be time, proud. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it is, it's every time you say no, it's flexing the willpower muscle and makes it stronger each time. And the other thing too, I reckon has been really helpful is if I just jump on my Instagram and look at all the sobriety accounts I follow. Oh, good one. Yeah. That I'm like, keep going, Breeze. I keep going. Like, yeah. That, yes. That's been really helpful as well. So um, if you're not on Instagram, peeps, jump on and just, you don't have to post anything. Just look at other accounts mm. um, to get some inspiration. So you've Love got that. this. You've got this, everyone. Yes, if we can do it. Do. Yeah. If we can do it. Meso has been through, you know, a huge life-changing event. She got through it. Yep. I'm just getting through. <laughs> <laughs> but I, every time yep. I say no or I go, no, don't need it, I'm like, go me. Yes, go you. Go, go us. Go everyone. Woo! You can do it. You can do it, peeps. You can do it. <laughs> All right, so phone fuck up today. Our listener, very good listener, sent this one in. She says, hey, girls, phone fuck up with a PH (laughs) from me. Do you remember that secret garden festival? It was like someone's paddock near Camden and it was always seemed to be pissing down rain and you'd get covered in mud and just splash about like fucking lunatics. It was a hoot. Sorry about the swearing. Um, like all music festivals, the lines for the loos were super long and full of gals because dudes could just whip it out and pee <laughs> wherever they like. So many conversations I've had in the line for the loo about how we should make she wees happen. Got one. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that. We'll come back. We'll come back. Come back. Um, uh, she says they are those little funnels you stick in your pants and then you too can pee wherever. I was completely sozzled, finally made it to the loo and forgot I'd stashed my phone down the back of my pants because I didn't want to lug a handbag around with me everywhere because I was dressed as a cop. (laughs) I was so (laughs) confused. Love this. I was so convincing too. People would look at me and literally scream as I walked through the crowd. (laughs) How good's that? 
Love, love, love. Well, <laughs> smart, smart. I love that. That's so savvy. Um, so obviously I forgot the stash. Um, so obviously I forgot I'd stashed my phone in my pants because I was totally sozzled. And as I pulled them down, I heard the clunk of the phone oh, falling into the portaloo. Dead. At that moment, my brother started to ring me, and to <laughs> my delight, the phone was still there. <laughs> The flap of the portaloo was pushed down, revealing oh, the horrors yeah. beneath. Oh. It was a late night in the. Uh, it was late in the night, and the portaloo had been heavily, heavily utilised. But my phone had become lodged in a particularly sticky pile of someone else's crap on the trap door <laughs> leading to the tank beneath. Oh, 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 I'm gonna dry right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, literally. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, obviously, I was over the moon. It hadn't fallen straight through, so I squelched it out, gave it a oh, quick wipe oh, down and answered oh. my <laughs> phone against my cheek. I remember all of this the oh. next day and my phone smelled like shit, of course, and I had to spend oh. like 45 minutes clearing <laughs> the earphone plug with a toothpick oh. scraping out all the crap. <laughs> Stuck in there, and she's put a poo emoji and yay. And she, oh, I also continued to use that phone for two years because I was too poor to buy another one, probably because I spent all my student cash on cheap prosecco and brie. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> dying. I mean, what an amazing oh. story! <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> but the poo, the poo. <laughs> Oh, my God. What would you do in that situation, Bruce? Yeah, again, if I was hammered, I'd be saving that phone. (laughs) If I was sober, I'd be like, has anyone got some gloves? (laughs) (laughs) Call the disinfectant disinfectant squad now. Oh, my God. That's so good. Thank you, brilliant listener. That That was absolutely brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm dying. Thank you. It's time for the recommendation of the week. Okay, today I have got, um, oh, I had a couple actually. I had so many, but anyway, Mm. I'm going to give you one. Mm. Is Mm. when was the last time you went to your doctor for a checkup? (laughs) You know the answer if you don't want me so, but yeah, you can if you want. Oh, yeah, recently actually. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So I was talking to my sister and she's like, oh, have you been to like the doctor to get your 40 year old checkup? Right. No, I'm mm. um, 40. How am I? 42. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, I went to the doctor and they just do like your bloods. They do your heart, like yeah, they check your heart. They do your blood pressure. They do, um, I went and got blood tests as well. Oh. I went and got a mammogram as well. So I did the whole kit and caboodle. Yes. And the doctor said to me, he goes, oh, this is, this is just a really good benchmark so that when you, you do your next health checkup when you're 45 or 50, oh. we can see how you're all comparing. Love so that. I did that and so all those tests are on file now and they can go and benchmark it next time. So, yes, please go and just get a checkup. Yeah, that's so good. Great advice. Great advice. Actually, I did see um, free mammogram, so I'm like, I need to. I had one years and years ago, but I need to get another one. So that's great advice, Frieza. Thank yeah, you. Breast screen, breast screen Victoria for your mammograms. If you're in Victoria, if you're elsewhere, <laughs> bring your... Just Google it. <laughs> Bring the boob shop. <laughs> yes. um, my recommendation, I had a um, had some really beautiful sessions, one with um, a counsellor. He's so good. Um, I had seen him before years ago and then I had an acupuncture session as well. And the two things I got out of those this week, the counsellor was talking about when you have anxiety or any of your emotions, you know how people say, oh, just sit in your feelings, like yes. just sit in them. I'm like, <laughs> No, Get me out. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> what am I meant to do? Just sit in there, like just sit there. No, oh, like I didn't get. I didn't understand. Like just sit in them because I, I found that really heavy. What mm-hmm. he talks about is treat your emotions like angry, sad, anxiety, whatever. Five big, big, heavy emotions. Treat them like they're little people or like a little you. Yeah, and treat them with kind and careness and careness, compassion, like say. Um, like they're your inner child. Yeah. And so, so that, like, so they've fallen over at the park and they've, you know, scraped the knee and you put a band aid on and you kiss the knee and, you know, mm-hmm. tune into it and ask it or, and say, I can see you there. I can feel you there. What's happening for oh. you? You know, really talk gently to that anxiety um, yep. and, or whatever feelings that you're feeling and really tune in and cradle and, and comfort that. I thought, isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. Isn't gorgeous. it a nice way to, yep. to move through that? The second That's one gorgeous. was, um, the acupuncturist Costa legend, he said, um, you know, when people talk about 
just focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. Just do you. Do you do Brilliant. you. Focus, right? That's great. But mm-hmm. I never really got it. I didn't. I was like, ugh. He said, just do things you love. Yeah, nice. Do things nice. you love. And even to the point, because he watched me putting my shoes on, and I'm a fanatic with undoing my shoelaces and then tying them up. I can never just slide into shoes with shoelaces done up. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit the same, actually. He was watching me push these shoes on after the session, and he said to me, everything you do, do it with love. Even mm. putting your clothes on or everything you do to, to just heal, like just, you know, all those little things. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. And so then I undid my, did my shoelaces. Oh, and yes. Did it with love. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. Um, <clears throat> just made me think of something, Maso. At the checkout at the supermarket, when yeah. they give you your change back, you just got to shove it in your wallet. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they just make it hard for you because they put the receipt, the notes, yeah. and then the coin. Yeah. And, and then, then you're in a hurry. All in. <laughs> yeah. So because I'm like, I want to take, I always like, try and take my time because I want to have my wallet in the order that I would normally have it in, instead of just shove mm. it all in. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna definitely take the time to do that now. Yeah. Do Sorry, really people behind up. me. I am sorting my, I'm doing something I love. <laughs> Back off. Because <laughs> everyone's in such a rush. Yeah, just take it. down. It doesn't, it doesn't even take that long just to do everything with love. Yep. Great reco. Great reco. I'm going to take that on board today, Mesa. Yep. You're welcome. Great. Well, that brings us to the end of episode something. I can't remember what <laughs> number we're up to. <laughs> and I can't help you there either, Breeze. Uh, anyway, I can't even tell you what we've got coming on next week, but I'm sure it's someone unreal. So yeah. buckle up. <laughs> yeah. Click, actually, click, I think, click, click. Yeah. Actually, I can't confirm, but yeah. Just tune in, peeps. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for listening. You. You've got these peeps. Cravings, yeah. cravings. You can overcome them. And you'll feel you'll feel proud the next day. We love you. We all love you. All. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Altina. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. 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 This podcast is proudly produced by our audio engineer, music extraordinaire, Eric Ladd. We love you, Eric.